Thank you and good evening. Uh, welcome to the meeting of Melton Borough Council. Evacuation procedure. In the event of having to evacuate the council chamber, please leave by one of the six emergency exits around the sides of the chamber. Please assemble at the far side of the front car park nearest to the park entrance. Officers will be on hand to assist persons who require any assistance. Public recording of the meeting. There is legislation that allows the public to film, record, or use social media at a council meeting. This must not be disruptive to the good order of the meeting, nor include any filming or recording of the public seating area. Please switch mobile phones to silent. Microphones. Councillors and officers are reminded to use their microphones when speaking for the benefit of all present. I'd now like to ask the Reverend Pat Oliver to offer prayers. Thank you. I'm all disoriented. <laughs> well, good evening, everybody. I trust you're all well. It's lovely to be with you again it seems a long time since i was last here um i brought with me this evening the reverend ruth simpson who is co-superintendent with me now in the mountain circuit uh, and will be taking over from me when i actually sit down which means retire um at the end of august uh, you have to go to synod and ask permission to sit down and they usually say synod grants you permission to sit down but don't put your feet up probably a bit like when you asked to retire but it's good to be here and to lead you in prayers tonight so let us pray gracious and holy god we thank you for bringing us safely here this evening and for your presence as we gather. May everything that is done and said in this place begin with your inspiration and continue with your help. We ask your guidance throughout this meeting that all the discussions, thoughts and actions would reflect your holy will. Grant to each member hear your wisdom and discernment that they may reflect your grace and their concern as they serve the communities you have entrusted to their care. We thank you for their calling and commitment to serve faithfully and speak freely and honestly. Bless them and their families. We offer these prayers, Holy Father, in this meeting to you in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Apologies for absence. We have received apologies from councillors de Burl, Freya, Glancy, and Wood. Are there any more apologies? Councillor Faulkner. Councillor Faulkner. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at six o'clock this evening, I've got a message from Council Higgins uh, to send his apologies. Thank you. Council Carter. Mr. Mayor, yeah, uh, Simon Numbly, uh, Council Numbly sent his apologies. He's not very well. Thank you. Any other apologies? Still for 21, yeah. Uh, right, I can there confirm that there are 20 fun, 21 members present here this evening. Item two, minutes. To confirm the minutes of the council meeting held on the 23rd of February, 2023. Mr. Mayor, I have pleasure in moving now. Thank you. Thank you. A seconder, please. Mr. Mayor, I'm happy to second. Thank you. Do any members have any comments to make in relation to the accuracy of the minutes? No. 
uh, we could pr proceed to a vote then, please, for the minutes. All those in favour? That's carried, thank you. Three declarations of interest. Founding members would like to indicate that they have an interest to declare. Could they please do so by raising their hand? No. Yeah. And then no. Any other registrable interest in respect of county councillors Orson and Posnet? are taken as being on record for the matters which relate to Leicestershire County Council. Mayor's announcements. Uh, this is going to be quite short and sweet this time. Uh, we've been to one or two different civic events. Uh, we went to the Taste the Place in Melton at the Stockyard. Um, we were judging also at the Pi Awards in Melton. That was a really well attended thing. There was over 900 pies again this year. Um, and they come from right the top of Scotland right down to the bottom of Cornwall. And it, it is a, quite a major event for the town. Last Thursday, <laughs> it was the Cadets Awards evening. And it was quite nice that uh, the cadet that I've got for this year has been made up to sergeant and he is uh, it's a young lad that's going to go somewhere he wants to be in the air force and uh, he determined he is going to get there is a, it's a credit to the cadets so that's in a nutshell the mayor's announcement so that's nice and easy for everybody um but after part of that now, I'd just like to recognise the dedication of the Melt Matters Wombles, who work tirelessly on a daily basis throughout the borough to keep it clean and tidy. And I would just like to invite Councillor Fisher to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I'd just like to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to all our Wombles for their hard work and dedication in making the borough of Melton not only a cleaner place for all its residents and visitors, but also a safer place for our wildlife to thrive and prosper. These fantastic volunteers of all ages are out there working tirelessly on a daily basis in all weathers, removing litter and collecting, crushing and coordinating aluminium can collection bins to raise funds for the air ambulance. I believe so far raising in excess of £6,000. Thank you, you're all amazing. I'd also like to just add a few bits here that uh, set up in January 21 when the pandemic restrictions lifted slightly, offering exercise and social distancing and a little traffic around. Started on the Asterby Road, Asterby and the Layby and Paddy's Lane, where they collected 150 bags of rubbish, a favourite place for lorry drivers. There's just under 100 active wombles collecting litter from all they're very proactive and all collection examples are over 500 bags have been collected in the waltham area over 400 bags have been collected in the kirby lane area all over all wombles are very proactive and even one bag collected a bonus to the environment last year bags of grot collected were in excess of 2,462. In addition to each bag, there are bits of old cars, old signs, and other such rubbish that are too big for the bags. To date this year, this year there has been in excess of 600 bags logged. It's easy to pick up from all the undergrowth at this time of year, as the hesitants, etc., are low. Along the Leicestershire Wombles, 
they're invited to the Houses of Parliament in December 22 to talk about their achievements. Things like this crisp packets from dating back from 1966 have been dug up and found in perfect condition. I think this perhaps gives us something to think about that packaging has got to be made more degradable. They support the air ambulance by collecting super, from supermarkets, community clubs, and the cans. These have been taken once a month, all voluntary, to the farm at Summerby, who have been providing the land for them to tip the cans out, and the tractors are driven over them to crush them down. They're then taken in a cattle truck to Chris Allsop, metal dealer, who buys them for £300 a load. It is donated to the air ambulance, and they've raised over £6,000 doing this. They're working with NBC to support the Wombles by providing the pink refuge sacks. They let the council take the way tickets to include with curbside recycling. Wombles are heavily involved with local cub groups, schools, and they're visiting every school in the borough to talk to the children about litter and the effect it has on the wildlife and how animals can get trapped in plastic bags and bottles, etc. I think this is a marvellous achievement. Uh, and I'd just like to, I've got a certificate now to give to one of the youngest members of the Wombles, Esme Flavel, who is here hopefully this evening to collect it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just to say that I have seen this little girl and her mum along the Waltham Road, and I know that with all these bags from Waltham area, we're not really dirty, but um, I don't know why. Uh, um, one thing that I have asked and asked and asked, and I'm asking the chief officer, and I'm asking everybody else, um, that they actually collect these bags almost straight away i know it's not possible but they sometimes are there for several weeks i know um i very often see ruth who i understand uh has collected more bags than anybody else but that um but i do see her and the other day she'd got a bag a, um, a rucksack on and she was she'd got loads and i can't remember how many um tins that she collected alone and then there were all sorts of other things but sometimes they get left on the side of the road people actually flatten them and then it starts all over again so please 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 will you collect them when when they're actually um can i make sure that you please that, that that when it's collected from the wombles will they be collected virtually straight away please thank you and great, you've done a fantastic job. Uh, now, as this is the final council meeting of the term, I'd like to just acknowledge the contribution of all members over the last four years. I particularly want to acknowledge those who may have chosen not to stand in the up and coming elections. We have some members who have de dedicated huge amounts of time to their residents over a considerable number of years. And as such, I would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone. Thank you. Item five, the leader's announcements, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and um, uh, thank you, Melton Wombles, for coming along. Um, no one's actually told me who the Melton Uncle B Bulgaria is. Do you, do you have a name for anyone to fit that bill? You're not going to say, are you? 
<laughs> I did find it interesting, by the way, um, that uh, you mentioned the Paddy's Lane lay-by. Um, that's it's causing me a, a fair bit of grief, actually, that lay-by is. And only today I've arranged with uh, our MP. Um, we are, she's going to visit that lay-by. Um, obviously a huge amount of litter there and also many other activities going on and Alicia will be going there I think it's the last Friday in January so it'll be an interesting conversation we have um, your announcements were brief Mr Mayor and I've got to say this one's not much longer either um, uh, members it is only a few weeks since our last meeting but even so there has been a lot of happening since the last meeting I am no thought mindful that we have now entered the pre-election period and therefore I will keep my update brief. As we look forward to the election, I want to start by thanking the election team for their efforts over the coming weeks, as I know what a busy time it will be for them. Can I also take this opportunity to highlight the new requirements that anyone who wishes to vote will need to bring photographic ID to the polling station? You can find more information about this on our website. I also want to reiterate the express, appreciation expressed by the mayor and thank for their service, those members who either chose not to stand or who are not re-elected. Mr. Mayor, I've always said that our staff are our greatest asset. And last week, we sent a team to the East Midlands Challenge where aspiring leaders from local authority teams across the region competed in a range of challenging scenarios. I'm delighted to say that our team were finalists in the best team category and actually won the Behaviours Award, showing once again that it is not just what you do, but how you do it that makes Team Melton so strong. Last week, the council hosted a number of important events, including the Here for Melton Community Support event, which provided an opportunity for residents to access support to address the cost of living crisis. We also hosted our partners and colleagues for the MMDR Meet the Contractor event, and at the Stockyard saw the launch of the new Leicester and Leicestershire Taste the Place tourism campaign showing the best food and drinks on offer in the region. Mr. Mayor, tonight we have a number of papers, all important, and I look forward to the debate that will follow. Thank you very much. Thank you. Public question time. There were no questions received. Questions from members. There were no questions received. Motions on notice. No motions were received. Item nine, cabinet recommendations to levelling up fund update. I will now invite the portfolio holder for growth and prosperity, Councillor Binloss, to present cabinet recommendations to council for the levelling up fund update. Members, as you all know, in July of last year, the submission for levelling up funding was made and in January we were informed of its success. Earlier this month, Cabinet considered and endorsed the detailed next steps and tonight we are asking Council to approve the funding arrangements. The report not only sets out the opportunities but quite rightly also confirms the governance of the programme financially, legally and practically. It is quite right that we understand the implications and nuances of the funding and the delivery requirements of the scheme. Subject to their own council's consideration on Monday next, our partners Rutland County Council will be the accountable body to government for the programme, whilst we in turn will enter a back-to-back -back agreement with them for our part of the proposals. And again, in turn, we will have similar agreements with Stevenson Brooksby College for their element of the bid. The report sets out the details of the legal, financial and the governance arrangements, 
which will be put in place to oversee this project. As a council, we will maintain regular oversight of the grant conditions laid out by the DLUHC and the government's own assurance framework will help with this. The report also confirms that we will need to allocate the appropriate staffing and resources required to ensure its delivery and seeks approval for the match funding necessary to secure the grant. Council, Cabinet and Scrutiny and the Audit and Standards Committee will all play a role in maintaining oversight and providing assurance and a first discussion with the Audit Committee is due to take place next week at their meeting. Members, with all of the above said, I would point out that at this level, funding provides great opportunities for our town, borough and, of course, residents alike. And it becomes even more powerful when coupled with the UK SPF funding also recently granted to us. It gives both our town and borough a real boost. Just to reiterate some of the headline benefits that this funding will deliver, and which are set out within the report, 183 jobs will be created. Up to 20,000 square feet of new employment space, 100,000 square feet of updated outdoor event space, up to 16 new food production units, an additional 9.2 million GVA to the local economy, a predicted 7,000 weekly market visitors, boosting our nighttime economy with the exciting work being done to upgrade our theatre by partner Stevenson Brooksby College. Finally, the cohesive benefits with our partners Rutland will also provide links to a demand responsive transport link funded through Rutland's Luff programme, which will run between Rutland and our borough, providing important transport links for residents alike. We all realise that this is a massive piece of work and we are indeed only at the start of the process and have a long way to go before it's ready. But we are confident that by working collaboratively with both the government, Rutland and our delivery partners that we will achieve for our businesses and residents all the benefits that this programme sets out to do. In short, we can deliver to Melton something that was originally a vision and is now turned into a reality. Members, our officers have worked both between themselves and with our partners in Rutland to address all of the above and to highlight the issues relative this, to this, ensuring that all the risks and implications are covered and that we may meet the milestones set before us, and that there are no insurmountable surprises along the way. Members, on this basis, I ask therefore that you support the recommendations 2.1, 2.2 and 2.3. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a seconder, please? Mr. Mayor, it gives me much pleasure to second the recommendations listed by the previous speaker. Thank you. I'll now open this item to debate and invite members to raise their hand to indicate whether they wish to speak, please. <coughs> Councillor Faulkner. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, very interesting report. Uh, I do have a, a slight concern, though, about the funding that we are proposing to put in ourselves, uh, where it could be, uh, amount to £1 million of borrowing that we have to do. Uh, considering we've already... Uh, got ourselves into with the south road 3.75 million pounds worth of borrowing as soon as they start to build that road another million here and two million uh, that was mentioned for the proposed hotel thing i'm getting a bit concerned about the amount of borrowing that's going to be passed on to the electorate of melton for the next 40 odd years thank you <clears throat> thank you mr mayor and thank you council Faulkner. Sorry. Um, yes, obviously, the million pounds that we talk about, it, it is quite correct um, that we expect that money to come through capital uh, 
in selling the, the uh, North uh, car park. Um, but, you know, there's always that possibility that that may not be the case. And it's right that we actually make sure that we're aware that there is a possibility. It may not be much of a possibility, but it is there all the same. And one has to make sure that everybody's aware of that. Um, yes, if that was to fall through, um, there's a potential then that we need to uh, look at other ways of funding that. Um, and that may well be that it would be down to uh, looking at uh, ways of, of funding that and resourcing that through uh, loans. Um, but let's also think that, that, that as well as that, um, if, for example, that land, um, the sale doesn't go through, um, we are going to, you know, go again at that. We have other people that were interested in that, and it may well be that that's taken on. It may well be that we look at uh, other ways and we look at uh, affording that through loans. But but that is something for the future. Um, and at the moment, we're confident that that will that the sale of that land will go through and it will fund that. Thank you. Any other questions from members? Councillor Evans. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, we all know about the hotel question and I thank Councillor Faulkner for coming back on this one. The reason I have confidence that we will be okay is because we're doing the right things as a council now, which we weren't doing maybe three or four years ago. We now have an asset register. We now know what we've got. We therefore know how much our assets are like any private sector firm would do. And I'm confident looking at those assets, and there are many that we are looking at, including this building here, that I'm sure our officers and our cabinet will find a way to make certain that we never get in debt compared to some of the authorities, which we see up and down the country who do. I agree, Councillor Faulkner, take very big risks and come a cropper. I'm absolutely confident that will not happen here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Are there any further questions, please? Yeah. Councillor Holmes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, rather wonderful that we've got this 11 point something million. Um, when I go around the town, I feel very sad. It is my hometown. And we get more and more shops closed. And some people say because of the bypass, people won't even bother to come into the town. Have, are we making provisions? We understand, and, and quite rightly so, that the, the stockyard um, and, and are doing a great job. They've, they've got a gin palace. They've got all sorts of things and, and more things that will happen. But can we make sure that, that the middle of the town can we be assured that the middle of the town isn't forgotten as well? Um, I don't know whether there's anything being done or being done about that, but I do know that quite a few shopkeepers are very concerned. But having said all this, I do think to get 11 point something million is pretty special. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, obviously we have the UKSPF funding. And the UKSBN funding isn't is substantial. It is over a million pounds, and a lot of that, or a certain portion of that, will clearly go towards invigorating and and strengthening our our, our town centre. And I think that that's something that's always been put forward as that. Um, so I'm I'm confident that that money will go towards that. Uh, and I think that that's already start. In fact, I don't think I know that that's already starting now. Thank you. Are there any further questions, please, from members? Councillor Chandler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As you know, I've been a critic of uh, our lack of promotion of Melton for the 20 years I've been on this council. And I do think it's important that now we look as if we're going to make some headway and have some attractions that we actually get to work and actually promote the place the whole borough 
South Stephen have just launched a brochure which is really spellbinding. All right, we, we, it's, you can't compare South Stephen with Melton. They've got Stamford, Grantham, uh, the Deepings, Bourne, two or three stately homes. But nevertheless, they promoted a business in my ward quite um, vividly in this uh, brochure. And I do think we've got to start promoting Melton. It's no good waiting until it all happens and then trying to have a, a quick rush on things. We should be trying to get people here now and tell them what we're doing. Because we never see, nobody out of Melton ever knows anything. I mean, I, I met a lady in my ward before Christmas. She'd lived in Bottisford for eight years and she'd never been to Melton. She goes to Newark regularly, she goes to Grantham regularly, but she said, what do I go to Melton for? She said, I don't know anything about Melton. She said, there's never no promotions. We never get anything with the council tax to say what's going on there. She said, it seems to be, uh, they want to keep everything to themselves. We've got to get out there and we've got to tell people what we've got. That's how um, all these people with shops and things, Sainsbury's and people don't uh, sit back and say, because Little or Aldi are taking most of their trade, they don't sit back, they have a, they come back and fire, don't they? We don't seem to be doing anything. We just seem to say, well, it's one of those things and we, we're not doing much. And I really do feel that we've got to start promoting ourselves and telling people that in a couple of years, I don't know how long this is going to take, but I mean, the money's coming and we've got to get on with it and we've got to promote it and we've got to sell it. And I, I really feel that we've got to start putting some brochures out. It's all right saying, oh, it's on the internet, <laughs> but nobody, how many people do actually look at the internet to see what Melton's got to offer? I, I just don't think it happens. I mean, if it wasn't for Beaver, we wouldn't get, Melton would hardly get any publicity at all. But I mean, however one criticizes Beaver, they actually promote the borough. They promote, do a lot of promotion in Grantham as well, because they want to get people to Beaver Castle. And we don't seem to, we seem to have lost the, the knack of, of attracting people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, part and parcel of both the UK SPF and the Leveling Up Fund allow for a lot of promotional work and it's right that we do that and I think you'll find that we are all well I know we're already doing that Melton is constantly now being put on them in the forefront as far as uh, the capital rural capital for food that's been on the television again recently um yes we have got offices they're working very very hard now to promote not just on an electronic basis but actually getting out there and talking to people as well and I think you'll find that when we come to promoting what we now what we will have with the UK SPF and particularly with Leveling Up Fund, that that will be an ongoing program and it will continue to roll and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I do think that this summer you will see a marked difference in the amount of of you know getting things done and actually promoting our town. I think that will be for definitely something that, that you will see. Thank you. Councillor Posnett. Um, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. I know I've been very vocal about the town centre is the marketplace and it's not the cattle market, and nobody will ever convince me of anything other than that. I did go to the opening um, event at the Stockyard on Friday, um, I went because I was representing Nick Rushton and there were some very good things there and Leicestershire certainly the food, um, the choices of food that there are not just in Leicestershire but also in Leicester that was mentioned and, and it's excellent and if some of those people are thinking of coming to the stockyard then it's to be hoped that there is some way of linking those businesses within the stockyard with something in the town centre. The evening econ economy in Melton is just about destroyed because everybody, or I say everybody, but I spoke to some people at the stockyard on Friday and people who've got 
youngsters in the teens, early 20s, none of them come into town. They all go to the brewery in the cattle market. I can't say that I blame them. Car parking's easy if, if they take the cars and they want to go there. And there's probably other things that they offer that the pubs in Melton don't offer. And I think probably because of what's happened with COVID and the cost of living and things like that, then something some time should be spent looking at the pubs and speaking to the landlords about what things they may or may not be able to do to try and get some of the trade in. If you come into Melton uh, for a meal in the evening, you can get a very nice Italian, you can get some very nice Indians and also a very nice Chinese. But unfortunately, you can't get anything that is remotely like English unless you go to Montero Lounge. Um, but, um, you know, I wouldn't choose to go there if I wanted to go out for a meal, but that's a personal choice. But I do think it is, it is a sad reflection that none of this money has been allocated for the proper town centre. But my hope is that when this is developed, the council will look more closely at how they can connect things that are happening in the stockyard with the town centre. If they don't, this town is dead. I know we're having two more cafes and that'll be great, but we don't seem to have anything else other than cafes. We, we need some other businesses and there did used to be some ex excellent independent shops in the town. Now that's not all the council's fault because unfortunately we don't own any property in the town. It's the landlords, the people that do own the property and some of those businesses don't wish, haven't wished to leave Melton, but they've had to go because the landlord has put the rent up or the lease up to such a high level that they can't afford to stay. So we can't blame the council for everything with the downfall in the town. Some of the owners of these businesses, uh, of these development, you know, buildings in the town have got to have some responsibility for that. Uh, I've said my piece. Um, I won't be here again on my feet to uh, voice my opinion about Melton, but don't expect me to be quiet because I won't. That is a promise. Um, you know, I don't come from Melton, but it's been my home since 1973. And I am very sad with what has happened with this town from center from what it looked like when I first came to live there. So I'm counting on you lot to get something right and make the town center work again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and thank you, Councillor Posner. I take on board exactly what you're saying. We are going to be upgrading the market uh, and improvement stalls. And, you know, isn't this exactly the right time to be considering and talking about, yes, the nighttime economy and clearly the, the, the uh, theatre itself with all the, 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 the new uh, the money that's going into that and, and all the improvements that are being made are going to certainly help our nighttime economy. There's no way that people are going to be coming into town to look at something, getting back in their cars and going off. This is going to bring in, without any question at all, um, you know, a, a much, much, uh, well, a much, much wanted necessary boost, as Councillor Posnett said, into uh, the uh, evening economy. But that's not all, really, is it? Because if you look at what we're doing in the in, with uh, the Love Fund and particularly, of course, uh, with the stockyard, um, there clearly is going to be um, a, a development and it's, it is going to improve our nighttime economy. This isn't going to happen overnight just like that. It's not going to be a, some kind of magical thing, but we are there and we will be working to do that. And I come back to what I said earlier. We do have the officers that are now starting to really work hard at looking at this and coming up with something that, you know, will be really, really good and beneficial for our, our, our nighttime economy. I think we all want to see that nighttime economy improve absolutely, completely. But this is where we can really make a difference. But listening and working and talking to everybody is, is, is also equally important. Thank you. Councillor Carter. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, 
uh, I go into town every Saturday for a drink and that. And uh, I'm going to miss old Pam on the marketplace on her own. Bless her. But I just want to put it forward. Why don't we see the town uh, councillors on the stall asking people so people can come up to them and ask them what they want for the town? Pam's been doing this stall on her own for the last two to three years, and I have not seen a town councillor on that stall with Pam. And I think you should be there so people can ask you what wants for the town centre. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to uh, not come back to Councillor Posnett, but kind of add on to what Councillor Posnett has been saying. Um, youth culture has changed and young people have changed from how they were 10, 20, 30 years ago. The things that young people like to do on a Saturday, Friday and Saturday night is now completely different to what I would have done. And I'm only, you know, six or seven years older than the people we're talking about, um, which is why the Stockyard is doing so well and why Montero Lounge is doing so well. They've looked at the market that's out there. They've taken note of what people want and, you know, they're thriving. They're doing really well. And it is unfortunate that, you know, what we have had and what has been successful before is not doing so well anymore because that that market has changed. So I, it is really important to go out there and talk to young people and listen to what they've got to say, because, you know, I've always been a strong advocate of that, but I'm afraid even I'm not good enough anymore because I'm old compared to them. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, I, I naturally support this motion. I'll be voting for it. But it, it, we need to get out there and talk to people and find out what. Councillor Brown. Yeah, just uh, <clears throat> again, obviously I'll be supporting this. I think we need to look at the positivities and have a little bit of reality here is most of the town shops are owned by uh, private equity rate companies. Yeah. And until that changes, it's going to be very difficult to reduce the, the rents, et cetera. Uh, and I think we need to get that message out there that basically it's not, not the borough council, it's not the county council, it's not any other public trust that, that does that. However, I think this is the start of an, exi an exciting journey, and I think it can work. And we should be looking at other towns that, that have got history, such as Whitney in Oxfordshire, which is in a similar size, which is a booming nighttime economy, has an older population, a demographic like we do here in Melton, but also had some offering for the younger generation there as well. The council didn't do all of that there. It was private companies that did it with the support of a little bit of funding from the county council and the district council. And then we go over to not too far away from us in Warwick, so Stratford upon Haven, and you look at the, the economic benefits and they have the, the retail parks on the outside, they have a nice historic <laughs> thing in the centre. And that's the challenge to our officers is you need to replicate that and you need to make that happen. And that's the challenge I'll put to you. And I think you can do it because you've got a significant amount of uh, uh, money in this. And it's about bringing the community with us. But uh, I'm quite positive about it because more and more people are coming out. And if you look at our rural communities, the pubs are thriving. You go, you try and book a meal in the rural areas in some of the decent pubs, you can't, you have to book weeks in advance. Uh, you know, my, my area community pub, you can't book on a Sunday unless unless it's weeks in advance, uh, uh, advance etc. Uh, Gadsby, up, you know, Paul's and Bottlesford, etc. And finally, what I want to say is, we had so I was watching the BBC last night on the 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 coast to coast food show, and there again was Melton Mowbray for various reasons uh, uh, on there with the food being promoted, etc. Uh, and we need to latch on to that, as Councillor Chandler said, and we need to make the most of that. And that's where the officers need to uh, basically make sure that we're then pumping that publicity back out the next day, et cetera, uh, uh, to do that and talking to the... But again, all that was shown there on that show last night was private businesses, and that's who we need to be working with to, uh, uh, to try and look at innovative ways to do it. And finally, this is quite exciting because it's actually an asset that we're able... Somebody talked about assets earlier. It's an asset, the capital market, that we're able to use we can't use a shop in the town because we don't own the shop in the town or the shops in the town. But hopefully then other people will come up with a, uh, with, with ideas. And if we can attract some of these more multinational companies in, they do do the market research and they will do the offerings that uh, Councillor Smith talked about. But yeah, very excited. It's the start of a journey. 
uh, and we can make it work. And if it doesn't work, it's going to be all of us in this room and our officers that, that haven't been able to do that. And, but I think we can do it. Councillor Pritchett. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, taste the place. I think that initiative has got uh, uh, legs that could run for a long time. Linking the rural capital food, Leicestershire food, um, to various locations, heritage, tourism, uh, it's got uh, a lot of legs. And if you look at the cattle market initiative for the rural capital of food um, as a hub with spokes, and the spokes go further than the town centre, there's a lot of spokes go out all around the borough uh, of people who are in um, food production, creating recipes and doing very well. Uh, in my own ward, we have people uh, producing locally chickens, turkeys, uh, the local butcher rears and kills quite a lot of meat. Um, we have uh, a local farm that's now cold pressing its own rapeseed, a, a growing market there. Uh, and of course, we've got the beaver fruit farms that started in somebody's kitchen, which I think is the same principle as startups at the um, at the cattle market, and now is a multi multi million pound international business. So I think I'm just making the point that this investment it, it's for the whole borough, and it's not necessarily linked to getting somebody in there just to walk into town. It, you would want them to. Yes, we do want them to it to link, but it's got uh, it, it spokes should go further. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any other councillors have any questions? No, you want to just respond then? Thank you. And finalise. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, it's been really interesting listening to everybody's comments. Um, and your taste of place is uh, really, really important. It, it's an initiative that's going around throughout the whole of Leicestershire. Um, and you're quite right. We are actually, there's a lot of, uh, of options and, and there's a lot of uh, possibilities that are open to the borough. This is not just about Melton Town. It is about the borough. We've got innovation in food completely across the whole of our borough. It really is very exciting times. And, it, and truly, people are coming from all around the country to see what we're doing here. And that's happening now. And it's been, it has happened. And I know this for an absolute fact. This has been happening now for, to the best of my knowledge, at least three or four years, a lot, lot longer than that. But it's gaining momentum because of what's going on in Melton now. We are in a unique position to be able to push this forward and to really take things to a head to benefit the whole of the borough as well as the town. And that does include, of course, the town centre. And we're just there to, to do that. And I, I've got no doubt that we will do that because there's an awful lot of entrepreneurial people that we see. As Ronan, uh, Councillor Brown mentioned earlier uh, on TV last night, you know, when you look at the entrepreneurial figures that we've got, innovation in food, innovation actually in pies themselves, um, it's quite incredible. So I'm looking forward to it. I think it's an exciting period for us. Um, and uh, I hope you vote for me. Thank you. Thank you. If there's no other members wish to speak, uh, we'll now proceed to a vote, please. All those in favour? Any against? Any abstentions? The, this motion has been carried. Thank you. Item 10. Cabinet recommendations to Council Leicestershire Resources and Waste Strategy 22 to 2050. I now invite portfolio holder for Growth and Prosperity, Councillor Binloss, to present the Cabinet recommendations to Council 
on the Leicestershire Resources and Waste Strategy 22 to 50 on behalf of the absent portfolio holder for climate change, access and man engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As Mr. Mayor said, I'm presenting this for Councillor Freer, who's unable to turn up tonight. So this is a really important strategy, not just for this council, but for the whole of Leicestershire and its emphasis on sustainability. Climate and environment is important to us all. The Leicestershire Resources and Waste Strategy has been developed over a long period of time through a collaborative approach between Leicestershire County Council and the District and Borough Councils, who collectively form the Leicestershire Waste Partnership. The strategy provides a framework to enable a sustainable system of waste management to be implemented. The strategy has now been finalised further to an extensive and meaningful public consultation and sets out how the Leicestershire Waste Partnership intends to manage municipal waste up until 2050. It is currently progressing through each council's decision-making process and is nearly nearing sign-off by all councils. I think it's just the North West that's still to approve. The strategy includes objectives and pledges which provide guiding principles and commitments to deliver the waste management service as a whole to meet the overall vision. Importantly, some of the pledges contained within the Leicestershire Resources and Waste Strategy are caveated and can only be implemented if sufficient ongoing additional funding is provided by government to cover the costs incurred by both the waste disposal and collection authorities respectively. These caveats are important as without ongoing further assuring, funding assurances, there would be significant financial burden and risks to local authorities. We're still awaiting the outcome of some national consultation and potential future legislative regulatory or policy change. And the plan is therefore high level and allows us to continue to collaborate to develop specific plans to deliver the pledges made. It is important that we continue to collaborate on how we manage waste and resources through this strategy and that it is an operational, strategic and member level. As I said, we are still awaiting some details from government, but are starting to receive information on some key areas, such as food waste collections, which our officers are starting to turn into their attention to. Many of you will be aware of the strategy and its development over a long period of time, including large public consultation exercise that took place last year. In this council, our scrutiny committee has been engaged as the strategy has developed, and I'd like to thank them for their part in the in and input in this. I'm pleased to confirm that the strategy before us today includes changes brought by both the public consultation, uh, the, with the key change being the emphasis and additional pledge on addressing fly tipping. Our officers also feedback fed back to the Leicestershire Waste Partnership that this was considered an important pledge by our scrutiny committee and that developing clear actions and learning from best practice will be key. The strategy is particularly relevant in the context of sustainability, climate and environment, and I want to remind members of the vision of the strategy to work towards a circular economy and contribute to achieving net zero carbon by 2050 in Leicestershire. This means fully embracing the waste hierarchy by preventing waste and keeping resources in circulation for as long as possible through reuse, repair and recycling to realise their maximum value whilst minimising environmental impacts. This is in line with our climate and environmental comment, uh, commitments, and it will be important to continue to engage fully 
with the Waste Partnership to develop the actions needed to deliver on the strategy pledges in a meaningful and an affordable way. Members, I ask that you support the recommendations 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 and 2.4. Thank you. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Mr Mayor. It gives me much pleasure in seconding this report. Thank you. I'll now open this item to debate and invite members to raise their hand the, to indicate whether they wish to speak. No. Nope. Councillor Chandler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It's very woolly, the report about food waste. And food waste is something that we've got to tackle. We keep hearing about pollution of waterways. It's all coming from food waste. And there aren't many AD plants around. There's one at Sleaford, there's one on the A46, but the A46, I understand Sam was virtually, they built it and they use it virtually for all their waste disposal. But uh, any waste we have on the farm has to go to Sleaford. And we keep hearing about the minor roads, they're getting congested with large lorries, etc. And I think we, we have got to push forward the, the building of AD plants. They, they, I mean, they're clean and they get rid of it and it goes back on the land and it, I'm told it doesn't pollute the rivers. Mm. Where you put fertilizer on the land, it pollutes the rivers. It, it leaches and ends up back in the rivers. So I do think, you know, we ought to um, say to the County Council, we would like to see um, AD plants be brought to the fore. Thank you. Anaerobic digesters for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Mr Mayor, if I can just provide a brief clarification, just to direct members' attention to the strategy pledge number five, which does make that explicit commitment around food waste that is subject to uh, the relevant policy changes from government and the funding because it's clearly a big cost in introducing uh, the food waste collection infrastructure we do understand that's coming uh, and we are starting to make preparations for it so uh, we've certainly heard suggestions that by 2025 that could well be in place so it's something we are working on and colleagues uh, and partners across the county will will develop those proposals in due course thank you Any further questions from members? Council have been lost. Yeah, actually, um, Ed, you took it away from me there. I was just about to say that, having read it thoroughly through. Um, but this is obviously clearly something that um, uh, is going ahead now. Um, and this is something, as far as food waste is concerned, that is being looked at by all the members of that committee. Um, but yes, it, it, I think it's best really for um, the portfolio holder themselves to, to give you a, a much thorough answer on that. Thank you. Any further questions from members? No. Uh, we'll now proceed to a vote, please. All those in favour? Thank you, that's unanimous. Item 11, Annual Equalities Report. I will now invite Councillor Rebecca Smith to present the Annual Equalities Report on behalf of the absent portfolio holder for climate access engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as the Mayor's just said, I'm presenting this on behalf of Councillor Freer, so please be nice. Um, this is the standard annual update to provide an overview of the Council's progress against its equality objectives and demonstrates how the Council is meeting its public sector equalities duty obligations. The Council's equality objectives are set every four years through a single equality scheme, an obligation required by the Equality Act 2010. 
Progress against the, the equality objectives is covered in detail within Appendix A, and for ease, key highlights of this year are summarised in the top of the action plan. This includes the revalidation as a dis disability confident leader, the highest level of disability confident employer scheme, achieving the gold award for the MOD employer recognition scheme, against again, the highest badge of honour recognising the support we provide for those who serve in the armed forces, veterans and their families, and a 100% score for access accessibility standard of our website, placing us in the top four of all councils nationally. And finally, the council should also note that our current single equality scheme ends in 2024. A focus during 2023 will be on reviewing this and a new scheme for the period of 2024 to 2028 would be brought to the council for approval in due course. Thank you. Can I have a seconder, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm happy to second it. I'll now open this item to debate and invite members to raise their hand to indicate whether they wish to speak. Nope. I can confirm that there's no members wish to speak. Um, that this item has been noted by council. Thank you. Item 12, pay policy statement. I will now invite the Deputy Leader, Councillor Graham, to present the pay policy statement on behalf of the absent portfolio holder for corporate governance, finance and resources. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have much pleasure in um, presenting this on behalf of Councillor de Burl, who unfortunately cannot be with us this evening. I think the most important line on it is 1.2, there are no significant changes to the policy statement from the previous year. So with that, I will move a recommendation 2.1. Thank you. Second, please. I'm pleasure in uh, seconding that recommendation, Mr. Mayor. I'll now open this item to debate and invite members to raise their hand to indicate whether they wish to speak. Any members? No. We will now proceed to a vote, please. All those in favour? Thank you, that's unanimous. Item 13, Statement of Community Involvement Update. I'll now invite Portfolio Holder for Growth and Prosperity, Council Binloss, to present the statement of community involvement update. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Statement of community involvement, members, is a document that councils produce which sets out how the community can be involved in the preparation of planning policy documents <coughs> and have their views considered in the determination of planning applications. It also sets out how the council will engage with communities in the preparation of neighborhood plans. The SCI provides clarity and transparency on the extent of the engagement that will take place and sets out the standards we will aim to achieve when involving the community. The SCI is being updated now to ensure that the document remains up to date and in line with procedural changes, which will then feed into the production and the consultation on the local plan review. A full, con a full public consultation was undertaken on the updated SCI between the 6th of October 22 and on the 3rd of November 22. The main changes were to strengthen and reaffirm the Council's approach to utilising primary online consultations, which were made possible following successful consultations held during the coronavirus pandemic. Flowcharts were also changed into tables to make them easier to read. It's important to update this document now at the start of the local plan review to ensure it's up to date and relevant. I fully support 
this updated version of the Council's Statement of Community Involvement and recommend that the Council approves it in line with this report. Can you please su uh, support me with the recommendations 2.1 and 2.2? Thank you. Can I have a seconder, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, happy to second uh, 2.1, 2.2. Thank you. <coughs> I'll now open this item to debate and invite members to raise their hand to indicate where they wish to speak. Councillor Poslet. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I, I think this is a, a very good paper. It spells out what, what we want to do and how we want to do it. And I think it, it is vitally important. We have, have started on the um, planning committee, well, planning department, having meetings with parish councillors so that we can talk to parish, parish councillors and help them understand how planning works and why we make decisions like we do make decisions. And I think this updating of the local plan is something really positive. It needs to be done. I know we've got to be done it to do it. Um, Sarah Legg has worked and does work exceptionally hard uh, and she will she will do an excellent job with this as she did last time and I'd like to thank Sarah personally for all the hard work she's done. The meetings that we've had with parish councils they actually have asked for them to be continued. We did one last night and we're doing another one on Monday and they've been very warmly received by parish councillors. And uh, I think it's something that um, I hope when I'm not here that will still be continued, that I'm not saying we have them every month, but at least once a year, we make these arrangements to talk with parish councils because it's only by talking to people and meeting with developers and giving, giving residents the opportunity to listen to why the developers want to do what they do do and developers listening to what the, the residents don't like, that we actually get planning to run smoothly and for developments to pass through. So I wish you all lots of success with this. I'm sure it'll go through fine. As I've said, I know Sarah will do a good job and that you're in good hands with Sarah. Thank you. Are there any other members wish to speak? Councillor Evans. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you also for the chair of planning on those words. I think we are, we've been through a journey over the last four years, and one of the most important parts of that journey, as far as I'm concerned, is in planning, getting community involvement. As a rural member, the number of times I've sat through planning applications and had parish councils tell me all kinds of reasons why they didn't like a plan and I had to t sit there and tell them, no, nope, you can't do that. That's not a planning rule. That's not a regulation. No, you can't say in a reply, oh, I just don't like it. It's too big. It's too, all kinds of things like that. And it is important that parish councillors, as, as far as I'm concerned, and a lot of rural councillors are educated to know, especially when they come to a planning committee meeting, what is and what isn't acceptable. Could I just take this moment to embarrass Sarah and say congratulations also on a relatively new promotion. I think it's a worthy one and I hope you have a wonderful time for the next whenever 10 months and I'm sure you will bring that clarity that the planning needs forward and uh, already I'm hearing good news from the parish councillors who have had this and I think it's a welcome asset because I've, for a long time there has been a disconnect between Milton Borough Council planning and the actual parish councillors and I got sick and tired of sitting in meetings I'll be blunt and having to defend and try and do it education of this area will make my job and anybody else's job in as a parish as a borough councillor in the rural areas so much easier so much easier thank you chair mayor Any other members? Councillor Bin lost. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just really wanted to um, say yes, I, I completely concur and agree with everything that's been said. Um, and, you know, 
I, we have a fantastic team and they are working really hard and they will continue to work really hard. Having that community involvement that we now have, having that dialogue and asking what can we do and, and, and the, the actual community themselves and the parish councils understanding what we can do and our limitations is very, very important. And we're getting there with that. And I think that this is really important uh, that we continue to do to, along this journey. And I know that Sarah will continue along this journey, as we all will, to make this a real success. And something that actually brings the community together. It's not an us and a them. It's everybody together. And that's really where we need to be with this. And I'm convinced that that's what we'll do. Thank you. Thank you. We will now proceed to the vote, please. All in favour? Thank you, that's unanimous. Item 14, review of the political balance and allocation of seats to political groups. I will now invite the monitoring officer, Kieran Stockley, to present the review of political balance and allocation of seats to political groups. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Given this is the last item, I'll try and keep it really brief. Members are asked to approve the political balance calculations um, and allocation on of seats on committees in accordance with the statutory requirements following a recent change. On the 13th of March, the proper officer was notified that Councillor Margaret Glancy no longer wished to be treated as a member of the Conservative group. And the authority, as you will be aware, is under a duty to review the allocation of seats to political groups as soon as practicably possible following such a change to any memberships of groups. Um, it is a requirement that once seats have been allocated to the political groups, the remaining seats are to be appointed by council from the independent non-aligned members. From your reports, members, you will see the revised composition set out in paragraph 5.3. 5.6 deals with the allocation of seats to committees and the places across the committees which require the agreement of council tonight. And due to the calculation re resulting in an underrepresentation for the opposition group, the non aligned, and the vacancy, um, the opposition group leader has confirmed they will take an additional seat on the scrutiny committee. We have consulted with both group leaders prior to this um, meeting, and nominations have been received and are contained in Appendix A, which should be on your desks this evening. <laughs> Members should note that whole seats have been allocated to the groups in the first instance and the remaining seats have then been allocated to are those that are not aligned to a political group. The non-aligned members have also, prior to this meeting, expressed a preference to take an additional seat on audit and standards and nominations for seats have been put forward to this meeting tonight for um, your approval. These nominations are also contained in Appendix A. Members should note that there is a vacancy currently on the Licensing Regulation Regulatory Committee. And the table at 5.12 details the total number of places on each committee to be allocated to each group. And for completeness, it also includes the non-aligned members and the vacant position. Members are therefore being asked to um, consider the recommendations at 2.1 uh, to 2.4. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Happy to take any questions. Thank you. Can I have a proposal, please? I'm happy to propose this. Uh, we've seemed to have done nothing but for months, but keep reallocating re seats uh, so hopefully this will last until the um, end of this council so I have uh, I have honour in, in proposing this and uh, I hope you're all very happy where you've been put thank you have a seconder please I'm very happy to second the uh, motion I now open this item to debate and invite members to raise their hand to indicate with who whether want to speak. Councillor Carter, please. Just a quick one, Mr. Mayor. Uh, staff working group. I can't do staff working group. I don't finish work till half past four and it starts at half past three. I can't get back for it. So it put me down. That's why I come off it in the first place. Automatically, it's gone, I've gone back on it. They do it too early. Mr. Mayor, would you like me to come back on that through you? 
That's fine. We can go back to the group leader and we can um, substitute with the consent of the room um, there after this meeting, um, Councillor Carter. I am under the regulations, the proper officer, once once notified by the group leaders of a change, will affect that change. Any other members wish to come make a statement? No. Yes, I do. Councillor Holmes. When things aren't quite as easy as they might be, and people leave, leave groups for whatever reason they leave, they are all, and I think, uh, obviously, I don't suppose I shall be um, able to say this again, um, but I feel very, very strongly that everybody who is a, is a representative of their area, their ward, should be able to be on a committee. And I, I feel very sorry that this has happened latterly, that some members have not been on committees. So I would hope within the next four, four years that this will not happen again and that everybody has the opportunity to be on committees. Thank you. And any other members wish to speak? Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Apparently, I'm on the uh, staff working group. <laughs> I think, for clarification, Mr. Ware, Mr. Mayor, um, Councillor Elaine Holmes, on, in light of what Councillor Carter has said, has put herself forward as group leader for that position on joint staff working. So I would go back to the proposer and the seconder just to ensure that they are happy for that alteration to be made in the table that is appended. Um, and then Council can continue. Yeah, no, very happy. That's fine. Thank you. If that's okay, then we'll now proceed to a vote. All those in favour, please. Any against? Any abstentions? I confirm that uh, this motion has been passed then. Thank you very much. I will now close the meeting at 1747. Oh, 19. Members, ladies and gentlemen, can I please ask you to be upstanding for the mayor of the leader? Oh, my apologies. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, um, once the meeting is closed, um, I'd just like to have a quick introduction to someone who's in the audience, that's all. But once the meeting's closed down, OK? OK, Mayor, if I could ask members and ladies and gentlemen, please do be upstanding for the Mayor of the Borough of Melton, Councillor Alan Hewson.